All right, so we've been talking um, about motion in general. Um, so now let's look at how we can um, graphically represent motion. We've been working on equations and formulas, so we're representing it mathematically already. Now let's look at being able to do it graphically. Okay, so um, see that we have uh, our little guy here, walking dude, and every time you see his image, um, there that means that a second has went by. Uh, it's a special camera. Um, the camera records an image every second. So the initial sequence begins at zero. Okay, um, so it's showing us basically on what I would consider a number line here. Um, if you thought of, you know, this as the origin point right here, this goes into the negatives and uh, this goes into the positives. All right, so let's go ahead and just label the time. That way, um, you know, we'll all be on the same page here. So this is zero seconds, um, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, um, so that is how many seconds have passed. Um, and then also notice that this is meters, so obviously on the line itself, we're talking about distance that has been traveled. So looking at this, do you think the motion is uniform or accelerated? In other words, are they going a constant speed or are they going, um, is the speed changing over time? Well, if you look at each time segment here, um, zero to one, we have two meters, zero to two, another two meters, two to three, two meters, three to four, two meters, and so on and so forth. So it's always moving two meters per second, okay? So that means it is uniform motion. We're going to talk more about um, uniform versus accelerated motion in just a minute. Um, and because it's uniform, we need to say the speed, and we just said it's moving two meters in every second. Okay, so we just looked at the distance traveled um, over a certain time period. Okay, so in order to take that um, basically number line representation of walking dude's data, let's turn it into first a data table and then we're going to actually uh, graph it on a XY Cartesian plane. Alright, so we know that walking dude was going two meters um, every second. So let me just go ahead and fill my seconds in here. Y'all excuse my little bubble ratting. All right, and we know that we're going um, two meters every second. So over here we're going to go up by twos. All right, so now we have taken that data and we've put it on a data table. All right, now we need to go over here and we need to label um, the scale of the XY Cartesian plane graph over here. Um, and we need to decide what goes where. Okay, so position um, is always going to go right on that Y axis. So this is definitely going to be position in meters. And then down here, we're going to have time, and that's going to be in seconds. Okay? All right. So we need basically our distance to go all the way up to 20. So if we count all of our little lines here, um, so 3, 4, oops. 5, 6, 7, 8, okay, yeah. So it looks like we can just label them all um, individually. Um, I'm probably just going to label by twos because our data is going to do that anyways. And it's sort of hard to write on this lovely padlet like this. Uh, tablet, not padlet. No. 
All right, I apologize about that. All right, so we have position over here. We've labored our axes. Um, time is down here. Now we got to scale this um, because it's such a large um, Cartesian plane for how much, how many seconds we have. Um, basically, I'm going to do a little bit different scale down here to make sure that I am covering up everything. All right, and then very at the end there would be our 10. All right, so we know that we start at zero, zero. So we're starting right there, and we're going to one, All right, so hopefully at this point you're noticing that there is a very obvious um, pattern here. And basically we can use this pattern to go off the shape of the graph. And it'll tell us quite a few things actually. All right, so if we were to basically connect these, pretend that I drew a straight line. Okay, so there we go. So when we're looking at doing a title, do you say time versus position? No, you always say position versus time. So it's always Y versus X. Okay. All right, as I stated earlier, the shape of the graph is really going to help you determine really quickly in position versus time. Um, if you have uniform or non-uniform motion. Uniform motion is, like I've said, it's equal distances and equal amounts of time. So think cruise control or like a clock where there's a steady interval there. Non-uniform motion is going to be like when something is slowing up or slowing down or even changing direction. Um, so... For example, car B travels unequal distances in equal intervals of time, or an athlete running a race runs faster at the beginning and ends while slow in the middle of the race. So hopefully you see that they're changing their speed, they're changing their velocity. So when we have a uh, graph that is completely linear, linear in distance versus time, that means uniform motion. If you have a graph that has a curve in it in position versus time, what that's telling you is you have non-uniform motion, which means you have acceleration. All right, just another look. If it's straight in distance versus time land, then it is uniform motion, constant velocity, no acceleration. If it is has a curve of any kind, then that is non-uniform, which means we have acceleration or a change in velocity. All right, so how would we determine the speed of this guy using the graph? So if you think about what speed is, speed is meters per second. Well, on our graphs currently, our position versus time graphs, we have meters on the y-axis and seconds on the time axis. So if you think about a line here, if we looked at the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x, more commonly known to some of you guys as rise of a run, okay, um, hopefully you'll notice that the units on the y are meters and the units on the x are seconds which is the exact same as what speed or even velocities units are, okay? So basically, in order to find speed, you want to do the slope. Don't remember, uh, don't remember, dang it. Don't forget that slope is, you have two points on the graph. You have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's pretty much our generic formula for slope. All right, so just to re recap, <laughs> X is always time, Y is always position. It's always said as position versus time. Your slope um, is going to tell you your velocity. Um, it's also Y over X. Slope formula, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. 
And then this is just looking at it in the variable point of view. So distance, um, <clears throat> 1 minus 0 over time minus 0's um, values, or change in distance over change in time. So these are just all ways to say the same things we've been saying. All right, so now um, you notice that we have two more motion graphs. We have running dudette and reverse angle dude. We want to add these to our already um, created graph of walking dude. Okay, so first let's look at this. Okay, so this is running dudette. Every second looks like she is going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it looks like she's going four meters in a second. Okay. Now, reverse angle dude here looks like he is starting at 20 and then going back to the origin. So, notice here, this doesn't say negative 20. It says 20. So, it literally means like flipping that first graph. Oops, didn't mean to flip the whole thing, though. Okay. Okay. All right, so they're literally flips of each other, okay? Um, and then if you look at his velocity, you'll see he goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it looks like he is going um, three meters per second, but he's going in the opposite direction. So his slope is going to be negative. All right, so let's go add these two guys to our graph. All right, so if you look on our graph here, um, this red line is our reverse angle dude. Uh, this green line right here is our running dudette. And then this right here was our original walking dude. Okay, so now you see them all graphed on here together. So you see reverse angle dude just started away and worked his way back towards, whereas walking dude and running dudette, they are traveling in the opposite direction um, at different speeds. All right, now let's look at the very bottom here. It starts talking to us about toddler dudette who crawls at 0.5 meters per second. Um, she's going to crawl forward from zero meters, and we want to look at her motion graph. All right, so I went ahead and added toddler um, dude down here. So it's the black line with the blue dots you see going here. Tried to draw you a little arrow, but I know it's all jumped up together. But hopefully you see the little toddler moves very slow. Walking dude's normal. And then the one with the steepest slope, that's going to be our running dudette. They're all traveling in the same direction, which is forward. Then you have rever little, sorry, reverse angle dude who is starting away from them and moving towards them.